Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is the IBM Chief Data Officer Summit. And this is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Caitlin Lepic is here. She's an executive within the Chief Data Officer uh, office at IBM. <clears throat> She's joined by Dave Schubemel, who's a research director at uh, IDC, and he covers cognitive systems and content analytics. Folks, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thanks Caitlin, we'll start with you. You, were, sure. you kicked off the morning. You, I did. Uh, I referenced the Forbes article, our CDO's Miracle Workers, yes, it's that's great. Right. I hadn't read that article until <laughs> I, you, you put it up there, I scanned it very quickly, but yeah, set up the, the, the event. It started yesterday afternoon at it noon, did. you're going through uh, this afternoon. What's it all about? This has evolved since, what, 2014? It, it has. Um, we started our first CDO summit back in 2014. And at that time, we estimated there were maybe 200 or so CDOs worldwide, give or take. And we had 30, um, 30 people at our first event. And we joked that we had one small corner of the conference room. And we were really uh, quite excited to start the event um, in 2014. And we've really grown. So this year, we have about 170 folks uh, joining us, 70 of which are CDOs um, or acting as CDOs in their organization. And so we've really been able to grow the community um, over the last two years and are really excited to see um, to see how we can you know, continue to do that moving forward. And IBM's always had a big presence at a conference that we've covered, the MIT CDO events, yes. and it's nice that you can leverage that community and, and, and continue to cultivate it. Dave, I want to ask you, so it used to, we were talking when we first met uh, this morning, it used to be data was such a wonky topic, you know, d data was, you know, data value, people would try to put value on data, and, but it was just a really sort of, Boring but important topic. Now it's front and center with cognitive, with analytics. What are you seeing in, in the marketplace? Yeah, I think, well, what we're seeing in the market is this emphasis on predictive ap applications, uh, predictive analytics, cognitive applications, artificial intelligence, and deep learning. All of those, those types of applications are derived and really run by data. So unless you have really good authoritative data to actually make these models work, you know, the, the systems aren't going to be effective. So we're seeing a, an emerging marketplace in uh, both people looking at how they can leverage their first party data, which you know, IBM is really talking about what uh, you know, Bob Picciano talked about this morning, but also we're seeing uh, the emergency of a second party and third party data market to help build these models out even further. So that, th I think that's what we're really seeing is the combination of the third party data along with the first party data really being the, the instrument for building these kind of predictive models you know, that are going to take us hopefully you know, far into the future. So, okay, so Caitlin, <clears throat> square the circle for us. So the CDO role generally is not perceived as a technology role. Correct. Yet, as Dave was just saying, we're talking about machine learning, yeah. cognitive, AI, these are like heavy technical topic, so how does the miracle worker <laughs> deal with all this stuff generally, and how does IBM deal with it inside the CDO office specifically? Sure, so it is, it's a very good point. You know, traditionally CDOs really have a business background, and we find that the most successful CDOs sit in the business organization, so they report somewhere in a line of business. Um, and there are certainly some that have a technical background, but far more um, come from a business background and sit in the business. I can tell you how we are setting up our CDO office at IBM. Um, so our new and our first global uh, chief data officer joined in December of last year, Ender Paul Bhandari, um, and I started working for him shortly thereafter. And the way he's setting up his office is really three pillars. So first and foremost, um, we focused on the data engineering, data science, so getting that team in place. Um, next, it's the information governance and policy. How are we going to govern, access, manage, work with data? Both data that we own within our organization as well as the long list of, of external data sources that, that we bring in. And then third is the business integration pillar. So the idea is, 
CDOs are going to be most successful when they deliver those data science, data engineering, um, they manage and govern the data, but they pull it through the business. So ensuring that we're really, you know, grounded in business unit and, and, and doing this. And so those are our three, you know, primary pillars at this point. So prior to formalizing the CDO role at, at IBM, <clears throat> I mean, remnants of these roles existed. There was Absolutely. a data quality you know, function, there was certainly a, a governance and, and policy, and, and somebody was responsible to integrate between, you know, the, from the IT to the applications to the, to the business. Were those part of IT? Were they sort of, you know, by committee? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and how did you bring all those pieces together? That couldn't have been trivial. And I would say it's still an it's still going, <laughs> it's still an ongoing <laughs> process, but absolutely, I would say they typically resided within particular business units, um, and so we certainly have mature functions within the unit, but when we're looking for enterprise-wide answers to questions about you know, certain customers, certain business opportunities, that's where I think the role of the CDO really comes in, and what we're, what we're doing now is we are partnering very closely with business units. One example is our IBM Analytics unit, so we're here with Bob Ticciano, um, and, and other business units to ensure that that as they provide us the, you know, their data, we're able to create that single trusted source of data across the organization, across the enterprise. And so I agree with you. I think a lot of those capabilities and functions quite mature. They, they you know, existed within units, um, and now it's about pulling that up to the enterprise level. And then our next step, the next vision, is starting to make that cognitive and starting to add some of those capabilities, you know, in particular data science engineering, the deep learning, uh, and starting to move toward cognitive. Dave, uh, I think Caitlin brought up something really interesting we've been digging into the last couple of years is, you know, there's that governance piece, but a lot of CDOs are put into that role with a mandate for innovation. Uh, and that's something that, you know, a lot of times IT has been accused of not being all that innovative. Is that what you're seeing? You know, what are kind of some of the kind of the, 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 is it project based or, you know, vast initiatives that are driving forward with CDOs? Uh, I think what we're seeing is that, that uh, enterprises are beginning to recognize that it's not just enough to be a manufacturer. It's not just enough to be a retail organization. You need to be the one of the best, one of the top two or the top three. And the only way to get to that top two or top three is to have that innovation that you're talking about. And, and that innovation relies on having accurate data for decision making. It also relies on having accurate data for operations. Um, so we're seeing a lot of organizations that are really, you know, looking at how data and predictive models and innovation all become part of the operational fabric of a company. Um, you know, and, and, it, and if you think about the companies that are, that are, you know, just beating it together, you know, Amazon, for example. I mean, Amazon is a completely data-driven company. When you get your recommendations for, you know, what to buy or, that's all coming from the data. When they set up these logistics centers where they're, you know, shipping the, the latest supply, they're doing that because they know where their customers are. You know, they have all this data. So they're, they're integrating data into their day-to-day -day decision making. And I think that's what we're seeing, you know, throughout uh, industry is this this idea of integrating decision in, data into the decision making process and elevating it and I think that's why the CDO role has become so much more important over the last you know two to three years we heard this morning that 88 percent percent of data is dark uh, data Bob Picciano talked about that so thinking about the CDO's um, scope role agenda you've got data sources mm -hmm. you've got a identify those, you got to deal with data quality. And then Dave, with some of the things you've been talking about, you've got predictive models that out of the box may not be the best predictive models in the world, you've got to iterate them. So how does an organization, because not every organization is like Amazon with virtually unlimited resources and, and capital, uh, how does an organization balance? What are you seeing in terms of getting new data sources, refining those data sources, putting my emphasis on the data versus refining and calibrating the predictive models. How are organizations balancing that? Maybe we start with how IBM's doing it sure. and Dave, what you're seeing in the field. Sure, so I would say from um, what we're doing from a, a setting up the chief data office uh, role, um, we've taken a step back to say, what's the company's monetization strategy? Um, not how you're monetizing data, but how are, how are you, what's your strategy moving forward? 
um, for monetization. And so with IBM, we've talked about it as a move to enabling cognition throughout the enterprise. And so we've really talked about taking all of your standard business processes, whether they be procurement, HR, finance, and infusing those with cognitive and figuring out how to make those smarter. We, we talk examples with contracts, for example. Every organization has a lot of contracts. And right now, it's you know quite a manual process to go through and try and discern um, the sorts of information you need to make better decisions and optimize a contract process. And so the idea is um, you, you start with that strategy. For us, IBM, it's cognitive. And that then dictates what sort of data sources you need. Because that's the problem you're trying to solve and the opportunity you're chasing down. And so then we talk about, OK, we've got some of that data currently residing today uh, internally, typically in silos, typically in business units, you know, some different databases. And then what, what our longer term vision is, is we want to build the intelligence that pulls in that internal data and then really does pull in the external data that we've, that we've all talked about. You know, the social data, the sentiment analysis, analysis the weather, um, you know, all of that sort of external data to help us Ultimately, in our value proposition, our mission is you know data-driven enablement of cognition. So it helps us achieve our, our strategy there. Anything you'd add to that, Dave? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, you can take a, a number of examples. I mean, there, there's a, a small insurance company in Florida, for example. Uh, and what they've done is they have organized their emergency situation, their emergency processing to be able to deal with tweets and to be able to deal with uh, you know, SMS messages and things like that. They're using sentiment analysis, they're using text analytics to identify where problems are occurring when a hurricane happens. So they're, what they're doing is they're, they're organizing that kind of data. And they're, and they're a relatively small insurance company and a lot of this is being done through the cloud, but they're basically getting that kind of sentiment analysis, being able to interpret that and add that to their decision making process about where should I land a person? Where should I land a, you know, an insurance adjuster and an agent you know, based on the tweets that are coming in rather than, than just the phone calls that are coming into the, into the organization. You know, so that's a, that's a simple example and you were talking about not everybody has the resources of an Amazon, but you know, certainly small insurance companies, small manufacturers, small retail organizations, you can get started by you know analyzing your you know what people are saying about you, you know what are people saying about me on Twitter? What are people saying about me on Facebook? You know how can I use that to improve my customer service? Uh, you know and we're seeing a, a whole range of solutions coming out, and, and IBM actually has a, a, a broad range of solutions for things like that. But you know they're not the only ones out there. There's there, there's a ton of folks doing that kind of thing. You know in terms of the dark data analysis and really providing that you know, as part of the, the solution to help people dis make better decisions. So the answer to the question is really both. You're, you're doing both new sources of data and trying to improve the, the, the analytics and the, the models, but it's a balancing act. Yep. And you go, coming back to the ROI question, it sounds like IBM's strategy is to supercharge your existing businesses by infusing them with new data and new insights, is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, I, I would say that is correct, yep. Okay, whereas in, in many cases, the ROI of analytics projects to date have been a reduction on investment. You know, I'm going to move stuff from my traditional EDW to Hadoop, because it's cheaper. <laughs> and we feels like, Dave, we're entering a new wave now. Um, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think there's a, the, that's been the traditional way of measuring ROI. And I think what people are trying to do now is look at how, uh, you mentioned disruption, for example. You know, and I think disruption is a, is a huge opportunity. How can I increase my sales? How can I increase my revenue? How can I find new customers you know, through these mechanisms? And I think that's what we're starting to see in the organization. And, and we're starting to even see startups that are dedicated to you know, providing this level of disruption and helping address new markets you know, by using these kinds of technologies uh, in, in new and interesting ways. I mean, everybody uses the Airbnb example, everybody uses the Uber example, you know, that these are people that don't own cars, they don't own hotel rooms, but you know, they provide analytics you know, to disrupt the hotel industry and to disrupt the taxi industry. It's not just limited to those two industries, it's you know, virtually everything. You know, and I think that's what we're starting to see is this kind of, uh, you know, virtual disruption based on the dark data uh, that people can actually begin to analyze. Within IBM, uh, the chief data officer reports to whom? 
So um, the way we've set it up in our organization is our CDO reports to our Senior Vice President of Transformation and Operations, who then reports to our um, CEO. Our recommendation, and as we talk with clients, I mean, we see this as a CEO level uh, reporting relationship, and and oftentimes we advocate, you know, for that as we're as we're talking with with customers and clients. Um, it fits nicely in our organization within transformation and operations because this line is really responsible for transforming IBM, and so they're really charged with a number of initiatives throughout the organization to have better skills alignment with some of the new opportunities, um, to really improve processes, to bring new folks on board. Uh, so. It made sense to fit within uh, an organization that the mandate is really, you know, transformation of, of the company, of the organization. And the CDO is a peer of the CIO, is that right? CIO yes, reports to the yes, same Yes, yes, that's individual? right, that's right. Okay. Um, and then in our organization, the role is split in that we have a chief data officer as well as a chief analytics officer. Um, but, you know, we often see one person, you know, serving both of those roles as well. Um, so that can kind of be, you know, depend on the organizational uh, structure. Of the, of the company. So you got to run the business, sort of grow the business, which I guess is the P&L manager's role, and then <laughs> transform the business, which is where the CDO comes in. Right, 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 right. exactly, exactly. All right, Caitlin, right, I'll give you the last word, sort of put a bumper sticker on this event. Where do you want to see it go in the future? Yes, um, so last word, you know, we tried, a, uh, we tried a couple new things uh, this, this year. We had our deep dive breakout sessions yesterday, and the feedback I've been hearing from folks is the opportunity to talk about certain topics they really care about. Is it governance or is it innovation? Um, being able to talk, how do you get started in the first 90 days? What, what do you do first? And, you know, we, we have sort of a five steps that we talk through around, you know, getting your data strategy and your plan together and how you execute against that. Um, and I have to tell you, those topics continue to be of interest to our, to our participants every year. So we're going to continue to, to have those. Um, and I just, I love to see the community grow. I saw the first chief data officer university, um, you know, announced earlier this year. I did, uh, noticed a lot of PR and media around the role of CDO as miracle workers, as you mentioned, um, doing a lot of great work. So, you know, we're really supportive. We're big supporters of the role. Um, we'll continue to host in-person events, uh, do virtual events, continue to support CDOs to be successful. Um, and our big plug is will be World of Watson um, is our big IBM analytics event in October, uh, last week of October in Vegas. So we certainly invite folks to join us there. Cube will be and there. And you'll be there, right? Cube okay, good. There. Still trying to get Ginny on. So Ginny, if you're watching, you're welcome <laughs> to come on the Cube. So and, can we uh, do a second interview and then we'll see if we can get Ginny. Love to see that. And I saw Hillary Mason's going to be there yes, as well, Cube yes. alum. So that'll yep. be fantastic to see her. So. Well, excellent. Congratulations on being ahead of the curve with the Chief Data Officer uh, theme. And I really appreciate you coming to theCUBE, Dave. Thank you, too. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from the Chief Data Officer Summit, IBM's event in Boston. Be right back. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm a longtime industry analyst.